Certain procedures, like instrument departures, will list a climb gradient in order to conduct them. Now, even though Part 91 flights aren't strictly required to adhere to these minimums, and there are legal interpretations for clarifying this, they're based on obstacle protection, so it's strongly recommended we all follow them. Here, in Luray, Virginia, we need to maintain a minimum climb gradient of 400 feet per nautical mile. Climb gradients use, as units of measurement, altitude gains per distance traveled, feet per nautical mile. In the cockpit, we see climb measured as altitude gained per time elapsed, feet per minute. We learn that we can convert feet per minute to feet per nautical mile by taking the aircraft's ground speed, dividing it by 60, and multiplying the result by feet per nautical mile. But there's no instrument in most cockpits to directly display climb in feet per nautical mile. Foreflake can help with that. Here, we're at 500 feet in standard pressure and temperature, so we have a density altitude close to sea level. We're at max gross weight, and we're going to look at what our aircraft climb gradient looks like. To have ForeFlight aid us, we're going to open what's called the instrument panel by tapping the button on the top menu. This gives us some real-time information along the bottom, and these fields are customizable. We're going to swap out the field on the right, the accuracy of the GPS signal, by tapping on it. We'll select Climb Gradient now to show our climb in feet per nautical mile. We're going to start by measuring our climb gradient, the aircraft's VY speed of around 72 knots. The POH recommends we do a max performance climb out with 10 degrees flaps, so we'll put that in. As we climb with full power, we'll wait until the aircraft is stable at its VY speed and see that we get a climb gradient around 500 feet per nautical mile. Remember that this is at sea level in calm winds and standard conditions. If we were to continue climbing in thinner air, this climb gradient would be lower. Now let's try the same exercise at VX, which is recommended for max performance climbs. As we go into the climb and stabilize at 64 knots, we see our climb gradient is slightly better, 575 or 600 feet per nautical mile. So climbing at VX and 10 degrees flaps gives us our best climb gradient and at sea level, calm winds and max gross weight, it's well higher than that required climb gradient of 400 we looked at before. Now, that was in Virginia, and here of course we're in Key West, but try this procedure in your aircraft close to sea level, at a safe altitude with minimal obstructions, to get an idea of what kind of climb your aircraft is capable of, so that the next time you're in mountainous terrain, you don't have to guess at whether you can make minimums. And as always, head over to our Flight Insight course pages linked here or in the description to check out all our popular ground schools today.